This is one node and this is 15. Same footage, same resolve tools, but using just one node is like trying to paint the Mona Lisa with house paint and a roller. Let me show you how color grading in DaVinci Resolve really works, why pros never use just one node, and how to unlock the color potential in any shot. Later, I'll show you the exact node tree I've been using for over a year now to grade all my videos. Let's start with one single node. This is log footage and already we're going to run into some problems. We'll fix those later in the video. So because this is log footage it's undersaturated and low contrast. Come over to the primaries, we increase the saturation, increase the contrast, we'll come over to the HDR palette, we'll drag the gobel wheel around, try and correct the color and maybe we want to increase the exposure a little bit. Come back here and increase the contrast and the pivot. Give it some lift, bring down the gain. Here's the before and here's the after. There's a lot of problems with this one node version though. The first problem is we're working with log footage, so we're not doing a technically correct translation from log footage to our screen. We also can't isolate some of the changes we've made from the other changes. If I wanted to see what this looked like without the contrast adjustment, I'd have to go and double click on contrast to reset it, have a look what it looks like, hit Control Z to undo that resetting. So this is super tedious and really error prone. Undoing things can also get tricky and messy, and if if you were to come back to this grade in a few days or a few weeks or even a few months you'd have no idea really what was going on in this one single node there's a real lack of clarity about what your intent was when you first started grading this footage but what happens if we were to increase this to perhaps three nodes we'll go and add two serial nodes by either clicking or hitting alt s and now we've got three places where we can perform color grading operations let's fix one of the biggest problems of the one node approach and that's the fact that it's not a technically correct conversion from log footage open the effects drag the color space transform effect onto this first node this footage was shot with sony s log 3 so we're going to choose s gamut 3 cine and sony s log 3 what we're doing is telling Resolve what technical format the input video file is in. Now we can tell this node what kind of color information to output. In this case, we're going to output DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. This is a massive color space, which is great to color grade inside of because it's gonna make it less likely you're gonna hit the edges of a color space and cause artifacts. To make it easier to understand, we'll give this node a label to DaVinci Wide Gamut. This is also gonna help us in the future if we ever come back to this grade and we're wondering what we did. You see this footage looks terrible still. That's because we're still in a log space. Just now in this node, we're working with the Winchy Wide Gamut Intermediate. But let's go and open up the effects. We'll drag a new color space transform effect onto node three. We know now we're working with DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, so we'll go and set those as the inputs. And as the outputs, we're gonna specify what we're viewing on the screen and what we want to export the video file as. In this case, we're gonna output for a standard screen, Gamma 2.4. And straight away, you can see that that image is looking a bit more normal. This is before, this is after. And we still haven't actually had to do any color grading changes yet, but already it's looking in a much better style starting place than the one node version. So now we've got these two technical transform nodes, we can use this third node to go and apply our color grading adjustments. Let's add some contrast. Maybe we'll just increase the exposure slightly just to open things up a bit. We'll drag this dot around to adjust the colors and maybe we'll head over to the color slice tool and we'll use this to increase the saturation and maybe we'll reduce the saturation of the red in my face and add a touch more contrast. This is the before, this is the after. I think this version is looking so much better than that first single node version. And we know that we're correctly transforming those colors from S-Log3 into Rec. 709. However, we still have far too much going on in one node in that middle node. So we're still gonna have problems with isolating changes, undoing changes, and turning things on and off just to see what they look like. And that's why pros often take it even further than this. Let's see what happens if we go from three nodes to 15. As promised, here's the node tree I've been using for over a year. I'll talk about this bonus 16th node in just a second. At first, this might look overwhelming, but don't worry, I'm gonna make it super simple to understand. This first node is our transformation from S-Log3, just like we had in the first node of the three node version. And this is the transformation to Rec. 709. But in the middle, instead of a single node, we've got all of these nodes to work with. The benefit of this approach is that we can be super targeted and change one thing at a time. Each node essentially has one job to perform. 
Let's go and make some adjustments. We'll switch over to the HDR palette. We'll increase the global exposure just a bit. Next, we can switch to the contrast node and add any contrast that we want. We'll go and add a good amount of contrast and we'll adjust the pivot. We can now move on to the color balance. I'm gonna use the HDR global. I'm just gonna drag this dot around to get the look that I want. And of course, we could switch over to the vector scope to help us with the skin tone line. So exposure, contrast, and color correction or color balance are three essential things that we often want to do at the start of a grading process. But check out this section. We've got four nodes in parallel where we can start to make slightly more fine-tuned tweaks to the image. This first node is for any HDR adjustments we want to make. I'm going to switch back to the waveforms. Maybe we wanted to come over here and affect some of these highlights. We could either bring them out to really make it look like a brighter day. That's not going to look too great. Or we could pull them down to create a bit of a moody look. Maybe we want to go to the other end and work on these shadows. Maybe we want to just open those shadows up just a little bit. We've also got these two color nodes. We can use these for making tweaks in the color. So for example, we could come back to the color slice. Maybe we want to have a look at the skin tones and the reds, switch back to the vector scope. We can always choose the zoom two times to make this easier to see. And maybe just massage the hues of the reds and the skin tones. I'm gonna to show you a much better way to check these skin tones in a second. Switch to the color two node. And let's say here, we wanted to do some work for the blues. We'll really go and push this just for the sake of YouTube. The next node in my tree is this tweak node. Once we get to this node, we're, we should be about 80 to 90%, maybe 95% happy with what we've done. This tweak node is to make some final adjustments if we're not quite happy. The benefit of this is we don't have to go and change all of these other nodes. Let's say we wanted to experiment with pushing the contrast even more. The next three parallel nodes are these window one, two, and three nodes. This makes it really quick to add power windows. So let's click on window one. We'll go and add circular power window, make it nice and soft. If I drop the exposure now, it's going to drop it in the middle, which is not what we want. So click this button to invert. We could also use window two to go and add a gradient. And now we get to the final two color grading nodes, the FX1 node and the FX2 node. These are nodes that I use to add any effects that have to come after the main part of the color grading is done. For example, in FX1, we could search for sharpen, drag that on, add some sharpening. I'll go a bit crazy here just so you can see what's happening down here. And then we could add a second effect if we wanted to. I'll come to this secret node in just a second, but you can see how already we've got much more logical control over what's going on. If we wanted to see what it would look like without just the exposure changes we've made, click on exposure, hit control D, or maybe we wanna see what it looks like without the contrast, disable that node, re-enable that node, or even the color balance. This is before the color adjustment, this was after. This node's disabled at the moment. I'm gonna hit Control D to enable it. And you might be wondering what the heck's happening here. This node is an effect and it allows you to gauge skin tones using the skin tone overlay. So we can come back to the color balance node and we can make some changes to make sure our skin tones are behaving. We'll turn off two times zoom so we can double check the colors. And this is what the final grade looks like before, after. I'll link to a dedicated video I've got on skin tones and using this plugin in the description. We used this exposure node earlier to modify the HDR exposure to make the image brighter or darker, but there's so much more to color grading than simply exposure or even contrast. And you'll learn all about them if you watch this video next. It's an epic tutorial and it really will get you started super quick color grading in DaVinci Resolve. I'm Jason Roberts, this is DaVinci Dojo. Please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.